So let's start. So the first question is, why do a year-end cleanup? And there's two major reasons for that. One is decluttering. Just like your house gets uh, this accumulation of all the dreck from winter, the stuff that you put down at the foot of the steps and then you keep forgetting to take upstairs, or you know, you've know you got a closet full of clothes and some of them don't fit anymore and you would need to take them all out and, and purge, it's a good time to look at your QuickBooks as well and see if everything is where it should be. And if you still have everything that you need, that gives you an opportunity to take things out that you don't need and add things in that you do as your business shifts. Also, the fundamental reason is taxes. I mean, everything comes down to taxes, whether or not we like that. Um, And so this is an opportunity to um, make sure that you are paying the right taxes, not too much and not too little. So let's talk about the year-end cleanups. So the main reason why people are doing doing these cleanups or keeping their books at all is for their accountant. And so the reason why I like to do cleanups is accountants fall into two different categories. Some accountants will actually look at everything that you have and make sure it's accurate and make sure everything's in the right places and then adjust things that they know are not quite reality. Other accountants will just take your balance sheet and take your profit and loss report and plug in the numbers for your taxes that they consider it your business to make sure that your numbers are accurate and they don't double check your work. And if that's the case, I mean, honestly, when I go into people's books, I think I've had like maybe three clients ever who didn't need any rearranging or cleanup. So it's really important. I've had, I've saved people like thousands and thousands of dollars because they overstated their income and they would have paid taxes on it. And so that's what I'm going to show you today are all the little nooks and crannies where you can find those um, places. So if you're a bookkeeper, this is a service that you really should offer all your business owners to make sure that they are completely ready to go for taxes. And if you're a business owner, I'm really glad that you're here so that you can find these nooks and crannies. And then the other reason for doing this year-end cleanup is your own needs. When you're running a business. There's a there's a ratio called the Pareto principle. That's I an mean, 80-20 ratio. And a lot of you I know have heard of it. Um, and so what that means is that 20% of everything that you put into your company is responsible for 80% of everything that comes out of your company. And as a result, what that means is 20% of your products and services are re- responsible for 80% of your revenue and 20% of your customers are responsible for 80% of your profit. And 20% of your time is 80% of the, of your outcomes. And so I like to use QuickBooks as that way of figuring out what that 20% is, because if I can see which of those 20% of everything in my company made me the most money last year, then I can do more of that this year. And then my company will grow proportionally. And sometimes it's things that you don't expect. It's a, a, a side hustle that you did. Like you just did a one-off for a, cus- a customer to do them a favor and you realize that that had a way better profit margin than you expected. Well, maybe that's an opportunity to pivot and to try something new in your company. So does anybody have any questions about that? You can go ahead and put up your hand or unmute. The next thing that I want to do is show you some of the tools that are in QuickBooks Online for accountants that um, help me analyze the books and point me out the places where I'm stuck. What's really cool is that these tools are actually really new. Some of them just came out this past year. Some of them came out maybe two years ago. The things that I used to do, I used to have to like keep a checklist and do it all by hand. And now that they have these new checklists, it's made it so much easier that it just some of it just puts it out right in front of me. The first tool that I want to show you is the reports options. And this is a tool that is incredibly overlooked. And if you come out with with nothing else today, this may be your favorite thing, that there's a tool that nobody clicks on. But when you do click on it, it allows you to set your default report dates. It allows you to set your reports to cash and accrual. Well, let's actually just go in and look at it. So I'm going to go ahead and pull up my QuickBooks. Now, this is my QuickBooks Online for Accountants, and it's a fake file. So Wild Style Construction is a gigo company, I mean garbage in, garbage out. You're going to see all kinds of crazy, irrelevant things in here. So don't look at this going, oh my God, Alicia's a terrible bookkeeper. This is just a 
test file. So the tool that I'm showing you now, so this is for people who are QBOA users, account users. So if you're a business owner, you just sit tight because you don't have this, but your bookkeeper does. So when I click on the accountant tools in the briefcase, over here is reports options right here. And here is the, the date defaults. And out of the box, QuickBooks Online defaults to last month. And so if you've wondered why every single time you run a report, it always starts at last month and that's not useful to you, this is where. Now, unfortunately, business owners can't change this, but the bookkeepers can. And the majority of my customers really like it on this year to date. So they can just pull up a report and it shows them how they're doing for this year. But whatever's convenient for the company is what should go here. You also have the opportunity to change the basis of the report. So there's the base, the cash or accrual settings in the settings for the company, which defines how the charts or the calculations are being run for taxes. But sometimes it's not helpful for the business owner. For instance, maybe they file cash based, but they still have open invoices and open bills, in which case looking at the reports accrual base is really going to be more useful to them. So I typically have most of my clients looking at their reports accrual basis because then they get the big picture of what's actually happening. And then they just file taxes based on cash based. And every time you run a report, you can toggle between the two. That's no problem. But I want them to be able to see their accounts receivable when they run a balance sheet. So I frequently keep this on accrual. Now, the next section right here is reconciliation status. And there's other places in QuickBooks Online for Accountants that you can see this, but this has been here long before any of those ever popped up. And so this is still kind of my favorite place. So this shows you all of your balance sheet accounts. And what I like about this is it's not just the ones that are hooked up to the banking feed. This is all of them. And when I am doing my year end cleanup, I will reconcile everything in here, not just the checking, the savings, the credit cards, and the loans, but I go in, even if it was completely unused for the year, I'll go in and do a reconciliation on it to zero for that. But basically I'll do an ending balance and put in my ending date of the last day of last year. And actually here's the secret. You don't even have to put the year on if it's this current year, but because I am doing last year, I have to put that the last year on it. So I'll start the reconciliation and it's an unused account. There's not gonna be anything in there. So I'll just go ahead and say, finish now. And I'm gonna talk about reconciliations more in depth later on, but what I wanna show you is when I look at the reports options, I can now see that's reconciled as of the end of the year. So that's why I go down this whole list and I reconcile everything and make sure that it's got that last date on it. Then I know that I've eyeballed it and I've signed off on it. Um, I especially important for payroll liabilities and sales tax liabilities, because a lot of the time people will code accidentally manually code something to a payroll liability instead of a payroll expense. And then that's going to sit on the balance sheet absolutely forever. And the only way you're going to catch that is by reconciling all of those accounts. So that's why I reconcile everything and make sure that something wasn't miscategorized here. Um, and so somebody's asking, how do you reconcile account with activity that's not a bank account? Uh, that's actually what I just showed you. Anything that's a balance sheet account. So anything that is an asset, a bank account, a fixed asset, a, um, a liability, or equity, all of those can be reconciled. And you just go in and you reconcile it. Um, a lot of the time, I'll reconcile it to whatever the balance is. I'll just go ahead and use that. Or this is my opportunity to say, well, okay, if this was a loan, was the interest put in or not? And so it gives me a chance to really look at the activity in each of these accounts and make sure it is what it's supposed to be. All right, so that is my first tool for reports options. Then there's an overview up in the upper left-hand side. And Business owners with QuickBooks Online Advanced do have this as well as QuickBooks Online for accountants. And so that's this overview here on the left-hand side. The first thing it tells you at the top is what version of QuickBooks is being used and whether there's um, payroll and sales tax. And then there's also any apps that are connected. And so that way you can go through and double check all of your apps. Now I'm not gonna go into that right now. Uh, 
Now, the next section right here is the banking activity. This is kind of like the screen that we were just on, but it gives you, again, all of the balance sheet accounts, but now it gives you the bank balance for anything that is connected to the bank and what the balance is in QuickBooks. And again, this is a fake file, so you know, you're not supposed to see 4,000 um, unaccepted transactions, but this is showing me what's in the banking.